Back in the 90s, Pantera was one of the biggest metal bands on the planet. This was a time when metal bands tried to be more alternative, but not Pantera. They stayed heavy throughout the entire decade. But then came the 2000s and the band started to have problems. Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Darrow were not getting along with the other members. This led to the band breaking up and a new band that was started by the Abbott Brothers called The Damage Plan. They only released one album because Dimebag Darrow was killed on stage. I will talk about all of this as well as the songs on the album, New Found Power, in this video. The album was released on February 10, 2004 and is celebrating 20 years. Let's start with how the band formed. Back in 2003, the band Pantera was not getting along and they decided to call it quits. Vinny and Dimebag still wanted to make more music, so they decided to uh, form their own band. They eventually hired Pat Lackman as a vocalist. He was previously the guitarist for the band Halford. The original bass player was Sean Matthews, who previously played uh, guitar with Jerry Cantrell, but he was replaced by Bob Zilla, who also happened to be the tattoo artist of the Abbott Brothers. They then recorded the new album, uh, New Found Power, the recording process went smoothly. The Abbott brothers mentioned that it was such a stark contrast uh, from working with Pantera as Bill Anselmo was uh, very difficult to work with. The album was released on February 10, 2004, and it did fairly well. It debuted at number 38 on the Billboard 200. Months later, tragedy struck. Last December, heavy metal band Damage Plan took the stage at the El Rosa Villa and one of the country's most known guitarists, Dimebag Daryl Abbott, play. But just a few minutes into their first song, trouble broke out. On December 8, 2004, the band was playing a small nightclub in Columbus, Ohio. While they were playing, this 25-year-old guy named Nathan Gale gets on stage and shoots Dimebag five times in the head. He died instantly. One of the security guards tried to stop him, allowing the other members to escape. The security guard, whose name was Jeffrey Thompson, was also killed. Two other fans were killed as well. One of them was named Nathan Bray. He ran up on stage and tried to perform CPR on both Dime and Jeffrey. But this fucking asshole uh, shot him as well. Then there was a Marine named Aaron Hawk who tried to disarm the shooter while reloading, but he was also killed. Eventually, the police arrived. Officer James uh, Nygmeyer approached the stage from behind and was able to shoot Nathan Gale in the head while he was holding a drum tech hostage. We were later told that Nathan Gale was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and he thought the Abbott brothers had stolen his lyrics. The police officer who shot Nathan Gale was also cleared of any use of excessive force. Supposedly, there's still some unreleased material that was intended for a sophomore album. Vinnie Paul wanted to release it because that was what his brother would have wanted. But unfortunately, uh, Vinnie died on June 22, 2018. There's not been any news of this material seeing the light thus far. This was a sad story, but now let's try to uh, lighten the mood a little and talk about this album. I think it's something that does not get a lot of attention. There are 14 songs plus one bonus track, so instead of going track by track, I'm just going to talk about a few major points and I'll mention key songs along the way. If you have never listened to this album, you may be wondering if it sounds like Pantera 2.0, and the answer is no. I think the band made a conscious effort to have a sound that is very different than Pantera. I would compare this more to bands like Slipknot, Mudvayne, and Korn. There's also some southern groove on this album, like Black Label Society, which is interesting uh, because Zach Wilde appears on two songs. More on that later. There's also that groove and industrial sound similar to Machine Head and Fear Factory. I did hear some Pantera influences in a few of the songs. For example, I thought the opening guitar riff to Breathing New Life uh, sounded a bit like Pantera. Here's a clip of that. Then there's a song called Blooded, which has some vocals that sounded a little bit like Phil. Here's a clip of that. Let's talk about some of the guitar playing on the album. 
there was a lot of groove metal. For example, the song Pride had some heavy groove metal guitar riffs, but they also experimented on that song with some trippy uh, psychedelic guitar sounds. I thought that was a good song, as it was a little more uh, laid back. On the song called Blooded, Dimebag plays some straightforward heavy guitar riffs with some added groove. The song Blink of an Eye had a bit of those groove metal sounds and cleaner, trippy, and psychedelic tones. There was also some southern rock. Uh, for example, the song Reborn had some sludgy southern rock guitar riffs in the style of Black Label Society, which is also due to the fact that this was one of the two songs that Zach Wild appears on. There's also some Southern Rock um, on the song Moment of Truth. This one did not have Zach, but Dimebag uh, played some riffs in the style of Black Label Society, so that was a pretty cool uh, song. There was also some industrial and machine-like guitar playing on this album. For example, the song Explode reminded me of Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. That song had some very unique guitar riffs that stood out on the album. Let's talk about the vocals. Uh, the vocals were done by Patrick Lachman. He has a very uh, harsh and aggressive vocal style throughout the album, but there were times he used some clean singing. The cleaner and melodic vocals were most apparent on the song Save Me. It was an interesting song. I felt it was um, one of the more radio-friendly uh, songs with use of clean vocals and melody, but at the same time, uh, very heavy with a lot of machine-like guitar riffs. Uh, this was also the first single and one of the more accessible songs on the album. Here's a little clip of Save Me. There were also some guest vocals by Zach Wilde, Corey Taylor, and Jerry Cantrell. Corey Taylor sings on a song called uh, Fuck You. It was interesting because, as I mentioned, uh, the band Slipknot in the overall sound. This was one sounded Kind of like Slipknot meets Pantera. This was probably one of the better songs on the album as it was heavy, aggressive, and had some good hooks in it. So here's a clip of that song. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Zach Wilde does some vocals on the song Soul Bleed. This was the last song on the album. It had some acoustic guitars in the intro. It was interesting because it sounded like Alice in Chains a lot of so it was the only ballad on the album, and I find it interesting that they would end the album with a song. But interestingly, uh, Jerry Cantrell is not on the song. He's on a bonus track, which I'll talk about next. And that song is called Ashes to Ashes. It was on the Japanese version and on the Punisher soundtrack. This one uh, has Jerry Cantrell. It had a heavy new metal sound. Uh, Jerry does vocals on this one. It was interesting. It was like a mix of Alice in Chains with this heavy new metal sound. The album also has a very good bass sound. I think the bass playing stood out on two tracks. The song Reborn had a really uh, thick bass guitar. It could be heard uh, throughout the song. Then there's the song Crawl. This starts with a thick bass guitar sound. And this goes into some uh, new metal style guitar riffs. I can't end the album without talking about the drumming of Vinnie Paul. His drumming is awesome throughout the entire album. I think when he's paired with his brother, he does some of his best work. I think for that reason, after Dimebag died, a part of Vinnie Paul left us. I know he went on to play in the band Hell Yeah, but I never really got into that band that much, and I don't hear a lot of people talking about that band as well. So that is all. Let me end this right here. Check out my review of Vogler Display of Power, by Pantera, that one celebrated an anniversary in February of 2022. It's also my favorite Pantera album and the first one I ever bought from the band. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.